Thank you everyone for joining us today. Some of the challenges that we have seen people facing around the world is how do we manage regulatory agencies when people can't physically work together? This has just been a, a, a huge shift for how people work. And so there's that question of how do you do it? And especially how do you engage with stakeholders? Because everyone knows that works in regulation that the legitimacy of the process depends upon relationships, relationships with consumers, with industry, with government officials. How do you manage all of those when, uh, when you have to be de distance and be in lockdown? So we're very fortunate. We have two experienced regulators um, that are going to be sharing about their experiences and what they've learned along the way. So let me just very briefly introduce them, then we'll jump right into it. Uh, Ram is a commissioner with the uh, Nepal Electric Electricity Regulatory Commission. He is previously a director of Alternative Energy Promotion Center, and uh, he's been an energy advisor in Vanuatu. Iram is a senior executive director and official spokesperson for the Oil and Gas Regulatory Authority of Pakistan. He's certified as a director for corporate, corporate governance and has served as a visiting professor at a university in, this, in uh, Islamabad. So gentlemen, thank you both for being here. We are appreciating the time you're taking to share your experiences, your wisdom, things that have gone well, things that have not. So let's just jump right into it. Let me begin with, with you, Imran. Your agency's been established for a period of time. The Rams is pretty new, so he'll give it, he has a different kind of experience. Yours has been around for a while. And you, so you had established ways of working before this pandemic hit. And what were people's first reactions within your agency when suddenly everything changed? Uh, thank you very much, Mark, uh, for uh, bringing us on this platform. Uh, first of all, I give you a little, little rundown on, on what we do and uh, when we established. Actually, uh, our mission is to safeguard public interest through efficient and effective regulation in midstream and downstream petroleum sector. So we regulate midstream and downstream. We were established in 2002 and we are as an independent regulator look forward to uh, the public interest but we also uh, look into foster competition, provide level playing fields, protect public interest and develop effective and efficient regulations. Now in Pakistan something very good has happened in, in last one year that uh, the Prime Minister has announced uh, a citizen grievance portal. So uh, we were just uh, getting tuned to it that a lot of people through mobile app file their complaint and those complaints go to the various departments, organizations, regulators, and which are coming to us as well. So we were, were almost there uh, in addressing and, and, and interacting with the stakeholders through digital means of communication. Then last year, uh, we went to US and we were basically working on uh, developing e-office. So we were somewhere uh, very close to going into digitalization, but this pandemic has pushed us into it. So this is, I think, uh, uh, one thing which is blessing for us uh, that we were there at a very appropriate time. So our organization, then, you know, little, uh, there's some percent people, those who are abreast of change. So this change has occurred overnight. So, uh, as uh, interacting with stakeholders, we have basically first gotten a shock. Uh, first two weeks were that, you know, work from home. Then we have started uh, uh, going half, 50% uh, uh, attendance. Then over 50 years, they, they would stay back. But the efficiency of the system has, I think, uh, increased. So we, we are working from home, but we are working very diligently. Records are there. So I think for the last three months now, we, we have started enjoying it. Uh, as far as the internal uh, work is concerned. So everybody is, the productivity has increased. So what I believe in, that productivity has increased. Uh, secondly, uh, interacting with the, with, the, uh, with the stakeholders, that was that was a challenge. That was a challenge because we were there, but people were not there at uh, stakeholders are not there uh, at that time. So we have a two part. A is we have, we've got the industry, uh, the public utility companies, and then the consumers. So we basically have to look after both the streams. Public utility companies, yes, 
they 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 are digitalized but you know consumers as consumers you know they are not uh, frankly speaking that way so uh, what we've done is that we and what they do, what we do is that we get all sort of complaints against public utility companies uh, that due to various reasons and we work as a quasi judicial organization we address them so we yeah. call both the parties and uh, address the grievances so what we've done is that we have asked our uh, 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 de delegates uh, or officers that you know you take them on uh, both the parties on whatsapp you take them on the zoom you take them on the telephone and start addressing the grievances so there is no pendency so we are now interacting through zoom through whatsapp through telephone so we have started doing that and uh, one of our major one of the major i'm just uh, just am here one of the major uh, mandate is the price determination of gas utility company so every year we conduct hearings and then all over pakistan and then we decide that what should be the subscribed price of the gas uh, in pakistan so this year what we're doing is tomorrow we are conducting hearings and we are using uh, zoom to to get in touch with all our stakeholders throughout pakistan and then we have also called physically about uh, 40 people uh, and the stakeholders in in the uh, in the hotel where authority will listen and then we'll do it through zoom so this is how we are interacting with our uh, customers okay. and uh, it will become All right. Well, thank you very much for that explanation. In fact, you anticipated a future question I had on how you do decision making. So you've already described that. So let me jump over to Ram because Ram in Nepal, you're a pretty new agency and you're a very small agency. So how is it that um, what were people's first thoughts when the pandemic hit and how? Because you're still establishing yourself. How do you do that in a world that just turned upside down in some sense? thank you thank you dr mark for having me here i mean you're very right i mean we just celebrated our first anniversary on the 9th of may you know during the this uh, pandemic you know uh, during the nation wide lockdown period i mean as you rightly said we are a small team you know five member team uh, commission uh, including your chair uh, a small group of you know experts have been actually you know deputed from ministry uh we are of course in the you know, final stages of finalizing our organization and development plan but when we started uh, people had a kind of a different perspective uh the from the private producers they thought that this is an another layer of bureaucracy that was their you know thinking uh, the utility utility is a big one uh, you know state one uh, the vertically integrated utility they used to handle everything i mean technical regulations economic regulations they would they thought that no 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 erc would be taking um taking over our job right so uh, and the ministry has been issuing and regulating licenses they also thought that no 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 you know this uh, the regulator is is there to actually you know uh, take some of our functions so this was from the outside whereas in the commission also you know we have Uh, a different background i used to be uh, you know heavily involved in project implementation um, all of us except one member uh, you see is from the academic side uh, so the perception you know uh, we had limited knowledge and uh, regulation and then uh, uh, you know the challenge for us was to actually educate ourselves as well as sensitize others about the role of regulator so that people knew that you know the regulator is visible regulator are doing, uh, doing uh, their job at the same time decision are based on uh, you know transparent and independent so this was uh, one of the kind of new challenge but at the same time uh, we are thankful to your government actually the usaid has been very helpful uh, in helping us in you know understanding the basic principle of regulation you know uh, they are also helping us in prioritizing multiple tasks multiple issues so one of the pressing uh, issue for us was to decide the consumer tariff so this has been pending for last four years and then you know, when we they, you know the day when uh, we started our office the last year in may you know utilities first request was to actually approve their you know uh, you know uh, request 
And then, but when we had the uh, format guidelines, they submitted us the tariff. That was, I think, in uh, Jan early January. Uh, but the COVID pandemic was already a threat in China. Uh, we reviewed, we started reviewing the document. We found some, you know, information, uh, you know, missing. Uh, we wanted justification from the utility. By the time when we received the document, uh, the, 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 we also had few cases already, you know, in, in Nepal. Uh, I think on 23rd of January, we identified uh, the first case and, and immediately after that, uh, you know, uh, the, the situation was different. Uh, we were planning to organize. By the time when we had, uh, you know, received the complete document, I think that was in um, early March, and we were planning to organize a series of public hearing. We wanted to go out in field, all provinces, do a kind of you know, um, a physical meeting there, get, uh, you know, uh, perspective from people regarding the consumer tariff. And then, you know, suddenly on 24th of March, the government decided a kind of, you know, nationwide lockdown. So movement was restricted. Uh, and that was that time, you know, we were confused what to do, you know, whether we, uh, you know, how, how do we do these things? Because the deadline, uh, when we give the petition number, you know, we need to decide within 60 days of the, you know, um, approval of the applications. So that was, that moment was difficult for us, you know. Uh, so in, in one way, uh, the, the utility, the stakeholder, they thought that, no, 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 ERC is very weak. They cannot decide. And the situation also, you know, uh, was uh, going in, the, in that direction. Immediately, what we did was, uh, you know, we first, uh, their perception was, uh, since uh, the COVID is an excuse, so ERC is not going to make any decision in this fiscal year. In this, uh, you know, the tariff, they cannot make. That was the perception, not, out, not uh, outside of commission, but within the commission also in the commission also because of the, uh, you know, we could take this as an excuse. Uh, but what we, you know, um, after the, the, the moment restriction, immediately, you know, the internet, phone was working, everything was okay. And then we said, no, 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 uh, we need to find alternatives. We need to prioritize our work. Uh, there, uh, the, you know, the, the first instant, the first, uh, you know, our uh, effort was to, you know, offload, was to Put, because we had already developed our website and we, uh, you know, put everything that we received from utility, the, the first applications, our response, their justifications, everything uh, in the, put in the website. And then we also mobilize uh, kind of, we use the, the tele, you know, the local radio to, you know, inform to everybody that because of the pandemic, we cannot conduct uh, public hearing. We'll be doing this uh, through the digital means, but, these are the informations that have been put in the website and there is one dedicated, I mean, Excel sheet, interactive kind of thing. There, you know, you know, you just put your, uh, the, the, the unit and then you'll know, okay, this is the uh, present tariff. And if the proposal is accepted, then this is going to be uh, my, you know, uh, electricity bill. Basically to, to know, to compare the existing and uh, so this is how we actually prioritize our work. Another thing, uh, you know, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll stop here and then I'll come back again. Yeah, let, let, me, let me ask, because you, you raised two really important issues in establishing right. a new regulatory agency. One is you have to establish that role. Um, I've been in many countries where I've talked with the minister for energy or for whatever, whatever the topic might be, and they would look and they would we would talk about the regulator and the ministers almost always would say you know my staff could do all that why do i need a regulator and then <laughs> being able to work well with the industry operators to get the information that you need this is your first time and you're trying to scramble through a pandemic so let me just take that and ask you so in that space it's important to have allies so how did you establish allies, people in Nepal that are on your side, think you're really important, that you've got a future role Thank here you. that's going to be important. How did you identify and work with allies to help you with that? Yeah, two things. One is, you know, uh, this is uh, the deciding consumer tariff is, is not only a regulatory issue. This is a political issue as well. 
Sure. Uh, of course, we, you know, the people were, uh, they were not conf confident that we'll be able to issue tariff. And then, you know, because of this pandemic, uh, we had to establish, as you rightly said, you know, a kind of a communication linkage. Then the, but utility was on our side because they were uh, the one, you know, if we fail to make decision, uh, they, were, they are the one to be victim victimized, right? And then they said, no, 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 we'll be able to give you uh, information. Uh, so they kept us, you know, providing information. Of course, this information is not as per our standard. We, we are also very new. So what we did was, uh, you know, the, uh, their, their information is based on cost of service. Uh, but we, we asked them, okay, if you give us, you know, three years past historical information, we'll be able to actually make embedded uh, type of service study based on our assessment, then they are in our side, you know, and at the same time, we also as uh, you know, the, you know, we are in third world, the politicians, politicians, their interest is to actually reduce tariff, right? Mm -hmm. So they wanted us, what are, what is the status? So that's what is your, you know, world. activities? Right? Yeah, that's true all <laughs> over the world. All the politicians want a lower tariff. <laughs> yes. And then, and then, uh, and the consumer, you know, um, the one of the key you know, um, uh, objective or activities is to protect their interest and rights. So mm -hmm. how do you protect them, engage them, you know, provide information, you know, you don't keep your information inside. So whatever information you just, uh, you know, uh, make them available. So this is how, and then in the meantime, uh, of course, uh, you know, the movement was restricted, but we have a crisis management committee headed by the deputy prime minister. And then in the commission, the chair is, we request a chair to make upward, you know, communication linkages. And then for the, you know, uh, downward, downward and horizontal linkages, then a spokesperson, I took the, you know, charge to actually uh, participate in different webinar, you know, so this is how we are going to, okay. you know, decide the consumer yeah. tariff. So all those things were, you know, yeah. All right. So let, let me, let me take, so you, you provided some really good insights there. And I want to, to bring Imran into the conversation one more time before we take, take uh, questions from the audience. So Imran, right. the, something that, that Ram was talking about there is something that two of our previous uh, interviewer, interviewees, uh, Marty Linsky and Jeff Lawrence, both talked about that if you want to establish reputation authority with someone, you have to deliver the kinds of things that they're expecting. And he was talking about that. They, um, they also had, a, had an also a really interesting perspective on when you're trying new things. None of us have done this before. We're trying new things. I'm tempted, a lot of other people are tempted to say, well, you tried something, that was a mistake, so you tried something else. Jeff and Marty both pushed back on that and said, no, it's not a mistake. It's a learning opportunity because you don't know. It's a mistake if, if you knew the right thing to do and you didn't do it. There is no right thing here. We're all just learning. So tell me about a something that, that your agency has done, Imran, that was really a great learning experience and what did you learn from it? Mark, uh, first of all, uh, as when we went, I ended my uh, talk and you said that you anticipated that about how does we do a decision making. Something which is very interesting is that, you know, we were very a conventional organization file moves, paper moves, a note sheet, everything. So with this pandemic, what happened is that we established WhatsApp groups within the authority, within the staff, then we've got the emails. So what we've done is that we have created a parallel uh, a digital network and all approvals were being basically given on that. And then we clapped it to the files. But this is a very great learning experience. And in that, we have seen that, you know, there is still no time limit. So if, if somebody has seen uh, by email at any any order, so it just gives an approval and, and then things are done. Last night, I think I've got, there was the, the normal, in normal circumstances, we need to get approval in a day or two, uh, the fastest. But last night, I got some approved something in about 10 minutes. I think this is this is something which is amazing. This is an amazing learning experience that you know you send something, it's approved by the authority, it comes back and it's implemented. So the great efficiency comes in and then transparency also. 
as uh, Rama said, that you know we have to share exp- knowledge with the with the stakeholders and uh, with the consumers, and you've been seen working. So we have a very good website, and then what I've been using personally uh, using a Twitter account. So whatever whatever we do, we just tweet, and a lot of people follow me, and then that that comes on the television, that comes into the newspapers, and then people get to know. Okay, there's something happening, and and transparency brings in credibility, and credibility brings actually it it put us burden on us as well that we have to come up with the expectation of of, of all the stakeholders. Uh, living between all our rules and regulations, and then the uh, the credibility among the audience is very important. So our learning experience is this: that in this pandemic, we have shifted towards digital efficiency has improved by now. Uh, touch wood, that's no mistake has been done, and uh, and and everything is being consolidated. All right. Well, thank you very much for that. So we've now taken the 20 minutes that I was going to be asking you questions. Now we're going to turn to the audience. So if people would enter questions into the chat, I'll transfer those over to Ram and, and Imran to, uh, to ask them. We, we have one already, so I'd like to get started with it, but other people, please chime in. After about 20 minutes, then I'll turn things over to Sam to moderate, and so you can open your mics and, and talk directly. So um, Ram, this is from... Um, uh, from Alfred, and I, you've already responded to it a little bit. He says, you know, this, your nascent organization um, had dealing with budgetary, financial independence, arm's length relationships with ministry had to be really hard. So just talking about the financial aspect of that, um, how have you established budget, established your financial independence, and managed finances through this? Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, this is a very good question, actually. In the first year, we got, uh, you know, uh, financial support from the ministry, uh, Ministry of Finance. Uh, but from this fiscal year onward, you know, we generate our own revenue. You know, revenue from utility, from the power producers. When you approve the, for example, power purchase agreement, when you give the consent for share transfer, there is a levy, you know, regulatory fee. And on top of this, you know, we also get, uh, you know, revenue from the utility. When they submit the tariff applications, they had to, you know, give us uh, uh, the fee. Uh, so that's how, you know, the amount, the, the revenue um, is enough for us. Uh, as we are very small at the moment, uh, once we grow, then definitely we'll be needing more uh, support. Uh, but that should not be a problem uh, because there, there is a very clear revenue stream in our systems. So this is one thing. Another thing is, uh, you know, Alfred is very right. I mean, uh, even though... Uh, we are, uh, you know, independent, but still you need to kind of, you know, um, link, you need to link with the Ministry of Energy to go to, to reach to the cabinet. So that for, that, for that part, especially for our organizational management structure, this needs to be approved by the cabinet, Council of Ministry. So we have submitted our document, uh, our proposal. Uh, hopefully we'll be, you know, getting approval very soon. Once the proposal is approved, and then the recruitment will be done by, of course, uh, by the Public Service Commission. Uh, but these people are not civil servant, by the way. They will be recruited based on our own terms and conditions. And then, um, you know, that way we will make sure that uh, the functional and financial autonomy will be ensured. That will be also, that will be also for you, you know, uh, let me, you know, for a new new regulator, what we realize is, you know, 3C, collaboration, coordination, and communications. These are very critical, uh, you know, points for us to actually uh, show our presence also. Uh, if we fail to, you know, if we uh, fail to perform, if our performance is not based on uh, some regulatory, you know, uh, principle, there is a risk that we can be ignored. You know, there are, there are instances where uh, we can be simply, you know, ignored, even during this uh, you know, crisis also. Another thing is, if we issue regulatory instrument without proper consultation and, uh, you know, cooperation with the utility and others, then uh, there is another risk that, you know, uh, this, will, this will create a regulatory shock and then our decision is not, is uh, difficult for them to digest. You know, that is also, we realize, we realize 
Uh, and another thing is, uh, so what we need to do is to build a trust among the stakeholder. Uh, and then we'll be able to, you know, say that, okay, we are independent, we are transparent, uh, then we are professional, then people will recognize us, okay, they, they are credible, right? This right. is what we've actually uh, learned uh, during this one year period. All right. Well, thank you so much for that. Let me ask a similar question to Imran. You had established financial systems, but a lot of regulators around the world are struggling financially because like what Ram described, they receive revenues from the operators and if the operator's revenues go down, the regulator's revenues go down as well. So how have you addressed, is that an issue in your authority and how have you addressed it if it is? Mark, uh, we have a similar way uh, as Ram told that we are a little mature agency. So we have a regulatory uh, licensing fee. So we're basically in all sector, gas sector, LPG, LNG, so all midstream and downstream sector, they've got a lot of uh, stake uh, uh, licenses. So the, the renewal fee is the annual fee, uh, then their uh, licensing fee, which is part of our, our, our own budget. So we are independent established that has been approved. So we are financially independent. And uh, secondly, we have a power of uh, fining uh, our, our uh, regulators who are, who are not following the licensing conditions. But all those fines go into the federal government. So we don't keep uh, any money uh, on that term. So that goes to them. As far as uh, the reporting and independence is concerned, we uh, directly report to the cabinet. Uh, and then we also liaise with the uh, Ministry of Energy, uh, Petroleum Division. So we, we work together as far as the policy makers in this concern. They ask us for their input if we think, but we route through cabinet, but we uh, uh, coordinate with the Ministry of Energy. So we have a very good relationship. Uh, pressures do come in, you, you know that, uh, and in uh, particularly fragile countries, uh, pressures do come in, uh, but the job of the regulator is to remain within uh, their ordinance, within their law, and perform, and, and it's been seen working. And I think the politicians respect you, the people respect you, respect you, when, once they see that you are doing something right. All right, well, thank you very much, Imran. So, Ram, we have another question for you. Um, this is from Vishwa. And once to get into some of the, the substance content issues of your regulation, um, Vishwa is asking, what's your strategy and plan for regulating independent power producers? Um, and uh, in terms of their, their behavior in financial markets, their, their prices, et cetera. So what do you, what is, what's your thoughts there? What is your uh, agency going to do or is doing? Well, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, this is very interesting questions. I mean, uh, we have so far, you know, the IPP power producers are, as I mentioned in my, you know, opening remarks also, this used to be regulated by utility, you know, utility used to handle um, uh, these people. But uh, now in the commission, uh, one of the, you know, area uh, support or, you know, uh, is to regulate them is to uh, develop a kind of a corporate governance model, basically, you know, so that uh, they're, you know, they follow the code of conduct, they give us uh, the right information, and then these informations are, uh, you know, uh, are a kind of, you know, tools for us to decide, uh, you know, their uh, activities. So in the commission, we are planning to develop uh, one regulatory management information systems so that there will be a uniform system of account, um, uniform re reporting mechanism, re reporting systems. There will be a kind of, you know, uh, uh, standard uh, operating procedures for all, um, uh, you know, uh, licenses. So these are a few things that we're planning to do. Uh, but at the same time, but at the same time, we are also introducing the cost reflective tariff generation tariff there we will be introducing two part tariff generation you know the the capacity and energy based tariff so once we introduce these things and they they will be motivated to you know optimize their project 
so that we will make sure that you know the, the uh, good projects will be implemented and those the inflated uh, you know the cost uh, or the project that cost very high will be rejected so that's how we are planning to do for for this we are now um, with again with the, the support of ucid uh, we are preparing a benchmark uh, benchmarking you know study so all across nepal uh, so that will help us make their project feasible so this is our immediate strategy. Yeah. All right. Very good. Well, thank you for that. Now, um, Vishwas followed up on the the um, budgeting question and has asked about conflicts of interest. Uh, both of you, Imran and Ram, you, you receive your funds through fees paid by the industry. When I was a regulator in the U.S., that's how we received our funds as well. So some people think that may be a conflict of interest. Of course, if you receive your money through the politicians, you're supposed to be arm's length from them too. So no matter where you get the money, there's a problem. Um, let me, let me, Ram, you just spoke. So let me go back to Imran. Imran, how, do you, how does your organization manage keeping people at arm's length when you receive money from them? And then Ram, I'll ask you the same question as well. Imran, what are your, what are your words? Yes. Mark, uh, what is in Vidas ways is that, you know, we've got, uh, when somebody applies for the license, there's a precondition that they have to fulfill all those conditions. Uh, then they have to basically uh, deposit the sum of amount. So we go by the book. We mm -hmm. go by the regulations. And then when everything is done, then we get third party endorsements and then we issue the license. This is the, the first initial thing. And then we get the result. Then again, there's a certain time period, the five years, the 10 years, or every year, there's inspections. So we get the fee. And we do everything, we go by the book. Everything is there. So if any violation is done, then I think uh, there's, there's, there's no mercy. Uh, yes, uh, there are mistakes done. So authority, uh, just look into it. And then uh, we don't actually work on penalizing something. We work as a regulator, to, to make things correct, convenient for everybody. Uh, basically foster competition, provide level playing field among all. So uh, we are there, it's, there should be no conflict of interest in terms and we go by the book. Okay. All I right. think uh, money is, is not, 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 not a conflict of interest. Okay, so as I understand it, you have some set procedures, You they're in public, they're transparent, that's for budgeting and your regulatory processes. That's how you deal with that issue. Ram, what, how do you folks deal well, with that? Thank you, thank you. I mean, uh, I should not say this is a kind of a conflict of interest. This is our money. You know, uh, the regulatory revenue, uh, utilities revenue is, is not their uh, profit. So this will be the consumers, you know, um, the tax or, you know, uh, the revenue that we generate from consumers. And then, uh, while approving the tariff, so we actually verify their cost, each and every cost. So that way we approve first, and then only you actually uh, get. In, the, in our recent tariff decision also, their, their, their proposal was, uh, you know, 86 billion. This has been reduced to uh, almost 68 billion, and then from that figure we actually... So this is, when you are transparent, when you have all these, you know, procedures, set procedures, and then uh, they cannot, uh, you know, the, 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 there should not be conflict of interest. This will be, you know, if you get funding from government, uh, there is a risk because government is saying, no, 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 if you don't uh, accept uh, our suggestions, then um, there is a conflict of interest. But from getting, because these, these are fee based on your service. So I should not say this is conflict of interest, rather this is our money. So, uh, so we, should, we should be transparent. We should be very clear in the procedures as Imran rightly mentioned. Otherwise, uh, you know, um, this should not be considered as a conflict of interest. Okay, that's, that's really good. Because what you, I think, really added is, um, is that if you do, you're doing your job well, that's your best defense. Uh, yeah. Accusations of conflict of interest, corruption will always be there. Just don't ever give them any oxygen by doing your job right. well. That's good. Thank you so much. Um, now, let me get to um, uh, Alfred's next question, and then, then I'm going to open it up uh, to, uh, to Sam to run the microphones. So Alfred talks about, uh, it's especially I think in your case, Rand, you're a very small organization. 
You have right. limited competencies. Um, I know you have been to, to PERC training twice now, and we're working with you uh, to, uh, to help you with all that, because you know, our view is that you should be the expert, but sometimes you have to hire outside experts. Right. So how do you think about that? How do you decide where are you going to try and invest internally and where are you going to look to the outside? Oh, very good question. I mean, um, as I mentioned in my you know, opening statement also, we've got a uh, few experts from the ministry, but they are um, also uh, not very good. I should not say this, but they are not very trained in regulation. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, uh, we've got support from USAID uh, uh, and Department of State, a few, you know, media advisor, media, media advisor, I, I, I'm saying not very senior advisor. Uh, the whole idea is to, uh, they are uh, named as embedded advisory, advisory service. You know, we get support from USAID and US. Uh, so these people, they are media advisor, they are not very senior, and then, but they are good in regulation. Uh, what what we are now doing in, in 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 ERC Nepal is they sit with us, they sit with our, our team, and then they uh, our team actually gets knowledge from them. So kind of you know uh, what you call it um, uh, embedded advisory service, mm -hmm. not consultant, not outside. You work outside around the system. No, you need to work in the systems, support the systems, and build the capacity of your own team. That way, when they are out. Uh, then uh, your team will be able to actually um, do the job, uh, do do the job professionally. So this is how uh, the embedded advisory services. This is our um, approach, and this has been accepted uh, by the government also. You know, in our new you know organizational development plan, we are not recruiting you know low level officer level people. No, we are recruiting a little higher uh, you know uh, level people. If those embedded advisors, if they want to, you know, uh, uh, they want to work with us, uh, they can also participate. So this is a basic. This is basically, um, uh, you know, a new model, a new ideas. But uh, this will help us, I'm sure, because this will help us uh, build our organization, uh, um, you know, in a professional way. All right. Well, thank you. So essentially, if there's a unique talent you're going to need for some period of time. You essentially have a contract with someone that works inside right. your organization, right? Uh, very yes. good. I, I've seen people, in fact, when I first started in regulation, clear back in the 1980s, uh, the agency had done that uh, with some people because um, there were some unique issues and that no one had ever solved before. So a team of experts basically sat with the staff for an extended period of time and worked through it. Imran, how, do, how does your agency handle this and and then I'm going to turn things over to Sam so how do you handle this um, Mark, I just need to tell you that I've worked in Securities Exchange Commission Pakistan Competition Commission of Pakistan Planning Commission of Pakistan and now I'm with Agra uh, the real essence of regulatory regime is you know you get best of the best uh, experts from the industry pay them good bring in uh, as, as part of your staff then group take new people, groom them, and then gel in the teams, and then they need to work because there should be uh, outside experience in the organization and they gel in. This is part one. Part two is that, you know, the regulatory knowledge is, is everywhere. It's, it's in the world. So you don't need to reinvent the wheel. So uh, you need to take uh, experiences from the people, train your own people, because that is your critical mass. Your people, your staff is your critical mass. So you, you train them and you take them along, but give them the best exposure. Give them not only the local exposure, give them the international exposure, invest in them. The problem which I see mostly in the developing countries is that they don't invest on, on, on the people. The tra traveling costs a lot, uh, it's, it's too much. No, actually that is what it creates a critical mass for a regulator, the strong, good regulators to invest on their people, give them the best knowledge, best training, and then you see the best decisions done better. All right, very good. So thank you for, for sharing that. I know you came with a fairly large team from your organization to, to PERC, and it was, it was excellent, the dynamics of your group. I, I remember several years ago, we had the head of the South African electricity regulator here and at the end of each day, he would take his staff that was with him. There were like six to eight of them. They're a large group. 
And he would ask them and say, okay, everything we learned today, what does it mean to us? So having that team discuss, you know, what did we just learn? What does it mean? How does this change us? It's really great, great management. Um, good for you folks. So uh, Sam, I'm now gonna turn things over to you to see if people have raised their hands. Hi, Dr. Jamison, thank you so very much. So uh, right now, this portion of our session is for our participants to share any experiences that they are currently having with, within their organizations or to follow up with any additional questions to our speakers, Ram or Imran. So in order to do so, if you're using a desktop or a laptop, you would go to the bottom of the Zoom toolbar where you see the participant tab and you'll have the option to select a hand icon and that will prompt me that you'd like to share or ask a question. If you're using a phone or a tablet, that Zoom toolbar will be at the top of your screen. And I'll also send everyone just a reminder in the chat right now how to do all of that. And then we'll see if we have any hands raised. As of right now, we don't, but hopefully we will get some hands in there soon. Okay. All right. So if there are no hands raised, oh, I still actually, have I think say something. Someone stop me. Okay, go ahead, Sam. Yeah, so I think Imran would like to just share right before we get started with the with the sharing experiences. Okay. Uh, Mark, uh, we went to, uh, I think about August uh, 18, we went to uh, Ohio, uh, Ohio uh, the Columbus uh, uh, PUCO and then uh, PUCN, Nevada. Mm -hmm. And what I done, I, I, I led the about seven, eight people what we used to do is I divided three people uh, into two teams, A, Team A and Team B. So every day one team is working and the other team is a shadow team which is monitoring them. Yeah. So at the end of the day, what we do is that they need to write the daily report and the B team used to check that, okay, is it all right or not? And next day is reversed. By the time we uh, backed up from uh, US, our report was ready. Mm -hmm. And it was complete. So we did that to work. And now that report is already on our website uh, to a report. So I'll send you the copy. So problem with us is that, you know, we, we go, we don't capture the knowledge and then we come back and then try to get our notes and scribble. So the best thing is that, as you have said, that, you know, document whatever you learn there and then uh, th th that will help. So th this is what I just wanted to share with you. All right, thank you so much. I okay, just, Sam. I just, I just yeah, sorry. Uh, oh no, go, go ahead, that's okay. I don't see any hands okay. raised as of yet, so. No, no I, 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 I just wanted to, I just wanted to share my um, experience uh, during this, you know, pandemic COVID-19. What we realized, you know, uh, the traditional regulator used to follow the rules, right? Uh, I, we, we've been also taught like this. You know, when we participated, attended the, uh, the, the course in Florida. So, you know, but uh, because of this uh, COVID, this has also taught us something new. I mean, you need, because you don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. So you need to decide instantly. So that, you know, quick and instant decision uh, making is, I think, a kind of dynamic regulatory approach you need to follow uh, during this uh, uh, this crisis. This is what we realized, and we managed to actually, uh, you know, issue the new tariff uh, during this, uh, you know, uh, pa COVID pandemic period also. And this has been appreciated by everybody. Uh, I saw one uh, question so regarding what are the challenges that you see. Of course, the government has actually announced uh, too many, uh, you know, uh, relaxation. I mean, the rebate, uh, the uh, rebate on demand size, the discount on consumption, all those things. So for us also, we need to educate them. You know, these kind of things are um, should not fall under regulatory purview. This should be government's decision. This should be, you know, the whatever they uh, make decision. This has to be, uh, you know, compensated to the discount. So this is one thing. Another thing, uh, you know, crisis is an, is a is a definitely a risk. But this is an opportunity for us to actually think uh, beyond, uh, you know, uh, the normal. So that's why um, all these automation, distribution automation, online billing and payment, remote monitoring, uh, establishment of digital dashboard so that you can actually make informed decision. Uh, and the regulatory management information system, a dedicated, you know, web portal. 
So these are the new things that we need to introduce. Once you actually include these things in your daily life, I um, mean, uh, this kind of, you know, crisis uh, can be converted into a, an opportunity as well. This is what I wanted to share with you. All right. Thank you so much for that, Sam. Uh, Sam, you're, you're, you're muted. muted. Sorry about that, guys. Thank you so very much. So yeah, we do have a hand raised right now. I'm gonna go ahead and unmute. Pari, can you hear us? I'm sorry if I pronounced your name incorrectly, forgive me. Thanks, Sam, and thanks, Mark. It was a really good opportunity for me to participate on this one. And uh, one, two short question to Imran. Just, uh, as for our experience that, you know, in Nepal we faced, uh, I mean, we are affected for tariff order was affected actually because of uh, this pandemic. And two short question to Imran, um, what is the deadline to finalize the tariff order once utility files, um, it, I mean the file petition before the commission? And second, how do you conduct public hearing in uh, your country? And if you feel, I mean, if you had similar situation, I mean the, you are uh, you are obliged to conduct public hearing during this in between the pandemic situation, and how would you conduct public hearing? All right, that is for Imran. Yes, yeah, and that's for Imran. Okay. Unfortunately, it looks like he. Unfortunately, it looks like he must have lost connection because he is no longer on oh. the oh, yeah. webinar. I think he's back. I, I think he's back. Okay. I don't yeah. see him. Or you could take another question then, uh, whenever he uh, rejoins, then. Okay, all right. Well, we'll get him is, we can ask him. He's back, I guess. Yeah. I'm so sorry about that, Hari. Okay, so it looks like we did have another question. Um, I'm going to oh, go ahead and. Imran's back. Oh, Imran is here. Okay, thank you so much. Just one moment, Hari. We'll get that question answered for you. Here. Thank you. Uh, do you want me to ask once more? Or? Yes. yes, I think that would be great. Thank you so much. Imran, I'm not sure if you can hear us right now. Yeah, no, no. I, uh, my uh, laptop is gone, so I've logged in from my mobile, so now I can hear. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. So, so we do have a question for you coming from Hari. So, Hari, I'll go ahead and turn things over to you. Uh, thank you. Imran, uh, two short questions. Uh, what is the deadline, deadline to finalize the tariff order once utility files the petition before the commission? And second, uh, what, now how do you conduct public hearing in your country? And uh, if you had, uh, you had to conduct uh, the public hearing during this pandemic, how would you manage it? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the deadline is that uh, a formality, I just start with the formality, that once we receive the uh, petition and writing from the utility company, then we review it, then we advertise. Uh, and seek for the comments, and we place that petition on the website. So we give 15 days uh, for the comments. Once the comments come in, then we uh, release an advertisement uh, for public hearing, uh, giving in the the date, time, and the place of the public hearing. And usually, we used to do this in normal circumstances, and then we once we uh, and then during public hearing, as, as, a, as a judicial process, we hear all the stakeholders for and uh, against. And then once we have got everything in writing, then I think we take about uh, 20 to 30 days to decide uh, on, on whatever, uh, give the order, speaking order. So uh, in, in uh, present circumstances, what we've done is that we receive the petitions we put on our website, we sought for the comments, the comment has come in. Uh, we actually, we, uh, in Pakistan, we have got two utility companies. One is Sui Sadran, which operates on the center and north. And one is Sui Sadran, which operates in, uh, and the gas companies, which operates in Sindh and, and Balochistan. So for Sindh and Balochistan, we used to go to Karachi and Quetta. And for uh, uh, Sui Northern, we, we go, used to go to Lahore and Peshawar. So we used we do you know, not used to do uh, basically uh, hearing in Islamabad. Now, what, what now we're doing is that tomorrow we are conducting a hearing on Sri Nadran. So we, we are doing it in Islamabad. So we've asked the stakeholders to come in, but we are connecting them to Zoom. So we have given the advertisement. So we saw the comments. We've given the advertisement. We asked them to register, and tomorrow we'll be will be live uh, streaming through Zoom, and we're taking the questions. 
and and then on 25th then we are doing same thing for for the sui uh, sadra so most probably uh, we'll be giving decision uh, before uh, within in a week or or maximum uh, 10 uh, 10 days in in present circumstances because uh, our uh, the prescribed rate uh, starts from 1st of july so we try to wrap up as much uh, as soon as possible because everything is ready we need to give chance uh, to all the audience to to hear what the companies has to say and it will be open transparent it will be put on 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 the web it will put on the groups everybody will listen to it and uh, this is this is how we we, we do all right uh, sorry one more one more one oh, more uh, short question uh, imran like is there any opportunity you create uh, for those people who do not have internet connection yeah so we 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 have asked them to send us things in writing so uh, we have put our position uh, petition on the website so if somebody asks if wants uh, to get that position uh, as a hard copy we give them as as well so we have uh, basically uh, put this in an advertisement that if somebody wants to have that uh, hard copy we give to give give them to us they can write us we can send them the copy we can mail them uh, so this is what we do and then they can send us in writing they can because there's a, a certain time so they can send us and this petition is is on the on the web i think for i think it's good uh, more than uh, one one and a half month there so definitely we we exploit all means uh, to to cater the copies all right thank you imran and then physical presence is also there all right sam do we have other hands We do. Yes. So I'm going to go to uh Nicole. I'm so sorry forgive me if I pronounced your name incorrectly. I asked to unmute you. I'm not sure if you can hear us. Uh okay. Thank you. Uh Thanks. I have a question. Sorry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you. And this is Nahakul Keshi uh, from Nepal. I have a question both the panelist and thank you very much for your nice presentation my question is this uh, what which you mention about the collection of tariff how does this whole uh, tariff process is regulated by the federal government or like both uh, nepal and pakistan especially lo- lesson learned from pakistan how your provincial government or sub national government are regulating this process because which one nepal also now we are going to the federalism then we have a seven province which we can learn from pakistan's lesson learn how federal government uh, regulatory mechanism it works in in terms of uh, collecting uh, tariffs you know? yeah. so uh, mark should i uh, answer the question sure yeah and then uh, ram will as well i think yeah the, actually uh, our organization is is federal organization so we cater all over pakistan and uh, what we do is that we uh, recommend a prescribed price so our mandate is to give uh, a actual picture to the government okay this is the cost of the price so uh, the government has a mandate to set the sale price so we do a cost price because this, this is this is the prerogative of the federal government then then there are a lot of socio economic issues the political issues so if they wanted to re- reduce the price then they have to give subsidy through other means to the to the uh, to the gas companies and if they maintain our uh, because they have we give we give a prescribed price okay this is the price of uh, per mmbtu so then they have a lot of categories the consumers uh, domestic consumers uh, commercial consumers industry so then they uh, split uh, accordingly so that is the prerogative of the federal government and then they recommend to us and then we issue the notification so this is how we work, we work in in pakistan all right ram so that yeah i mean uh, you know like in pakistan the regulatory commission is uh, regulatory commission sits at the you know federal level we do not have uh, you know provincial level regulatory commission uh, what we do is uh, we do not decide uh, the government's kind of you know uh no subsidy thing you know we decide tariff based on the service the you know utility provides you know cost of service and then we decide tariff 
Uh, so this is the tariff based on uh, the proposal submitted by uh, the utility. We verify their cost uh, proposal, prudency verification, all those things will be done. Of course, we also, uh, in addition to, uh, you know, uh, what Imran just mentioned, uh, you know, the physical, uh, you know, public hearing thing, we have, uh, as per the act, we are mandated to conduct public hearing. But because of this COVID crisis, what we did was we used uh, digital means. Basically, we used a Zoom meeting to conduct public hearing. And then um, uh, for those who cannot participate in the Zoom meeting, we had dedicated you know, telephone service. You know, three you know, dedicated telephone lines. Uh, this was for whole day. You know, seven hours, we, uh, this was participated by more than 300 participants from all across Nepal, including, you know, uh, almost 50 calls from different zones. You know, we, this was uh, recorded. Uh, that's how we actually decided tariff. And then, you know, government, if government wants to uh, top up or government wants to incentivize, this is their business. So the amount, the, uh, the impact of that, uh, you know, subsidy will be quantified by utility. And then they will just request, uh, you know, government, uh, be it federal or local government or the central government. And then the government has to actually compensate the amount based on the bill. And then they, they will be uh, paid directly to the, uh, to the discount. To the you know utility that's how you know uh, the regulatory principle works uh, in Nepal as well all right well thank you so much Ram Sam I think we're about out of time yes and I don't see any uh, any other hands raised as of just yet all right well let me thank both Ram and Imran for giving us their time uh, your colleagues your peers around the world are very grateful for the things you've shared um, I really do appreciate the audience for all their questions, their participation. Uh, it's just important in this time that people be able to learn from each other's experiences and, and the gifts that you're giving to each other are, are just invaluable. So thank you both so much and thank you to the audience as well.